Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, it seems we are live. Let me, I'm still uh, getting used to the to interface. All right. Uh, can you see me well? Can you hear me well? Let me know in the chat if you can. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. Hello, everyone. And once again, thanks for joining us today for this um, webinar slash workshop slash demo presentation about Bofi and the open source tools that are used to build it. And I'm Erica Heidi. I'm a developer experience engineer at ChainGuard, and I'll be guiding this session today. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to present some slides first to go through, explain some important things, um, show some graphs and some, uh, some things uh, to give you an idea uh, what is distroless and why these tools are so cool. Um, and then I will go through a demo. Let's hope that it works. <laughs> you know how they must go. Uh, but yes, and I am going to upload the um, demo files later on. So you can also try it on um, on your own pace later. You don't need to try to run the commands at the same time. So don't worry. The video is being recorded. So we're going to also have it uploaded, uh, I think, to our, uh, on your, our YouTube channel. Um, in a few days, I guess. So keep an eye out for that. Um, you can follow us on Twitter. So let's uh, get started. So I'm going to share my slides. Let me see. Studio. OK. Yes, so. This is going to be an introduction to Vofi, uh, but then you see that it's more about the tools also and how to build images, save images. So let's get started. What we will cover today, we will talk about the uh, Vofi ecosystem and I will present some of the tools, the open source tools that we created at ChainGuard um, that made both it possible and also ChainGuard images. What are distroless images? And then migrating to distroless in a demo. All right, so um, I will start with an ecosystem overview. So this uh, image has um, some of the elements I'm going to talk into, be talking about today, and I'm going to explain a little bit about each of these. So this is just an initial look. At, you'll see this image again in a moment. So we have Melange, we have APQO, and then we have Volfi and Alpine um, as um, distributions that can be used with uh, these tools. Um, and then we have the images generated with those tools. And I will explain a little bit in more detail. So let's start with Volfi. That's uh, what everybody's talking about, right? So Volfi is um, the undistro, but it's actually like a tiny Linux distribution. And we call it undistro because it doesn't have stuff that normally goes into a distribution, the full distribution. There's a lot of things that you don't need to run with containers. Uh, you don't need a kernel, you don't need man pages, a bunch of other packages. And especially if you are talking about runtime environments and build environments. Uh, so there are specific things we're gonna need. We don't need to have all that software that goes into a full distribution. And that's why when we were starting to develop um, chain guard images with the tools that I'm going to talk about today, we realized that we needed something different. We needed a new distro that was actually created um, with the, the intention to be used 
only for containers. So you don't need to have all these other layers and other um, software on the distribution. Vofi is based on APK, which is the Alpine Package Manager, as some of you might know already. And the, there are a few reasons for that, mainly because APK um, allows, it's, it's, it empowers um, the system that uses it to be reproducible. It has a few characteristics that help with that. So when you, um, when you talk about APT from Ubuntu, for instance, you usually have a series of um, steps to install packages and they will be installed one by one and the system changes at each installation, right? So it's going to happen. Um, and this, the changes are going to happen in sequence. And if one package fails later, the other packages are already installed. You already made a change to the system. But with APK is a bit different because you have a uh, you make a, a change to the system state, which is called a world. So um, you uh, set a, a, a set of packages that you want installed, or a set of packages you want to remove. Then the um, the APK tool we're going to look for those packages, and the system is not is not going to change unless all the packages can be installed. So kind of. This is the idea, the general idea. So you need, you don't need to roll back changes. You don't need to worry about inconsistent changes, incomplete uh, installations. You know, because with APK, you only get if uh, you you only get the final results, um, the build with success if all the packages can be resolved. And so one of the differences that we can uh, People ask about the differences between Bofi and Alpine. And one of the differences is that uh, Bofi is primarily based on glibc, while um, Alpine uses Mosul. But it's uh, on the roadmap to also have a Mosul version for Bofi, so to be compatible as well. So this is something that's on the roadmap. I don't have any um, dates that I can say, but it's on the roadmap. Um, and then the other thing is uh, the thing that I might um, love it, <laughs> love the most, is that all the packages are defined on YML files and built with Melange. And you can have a look at the Volfi repository. Uh, the Volfi OS repository has all the packages there. And you can have a look how they are built. And, and it's very transparent. So this is Volfi. And it's not like, um, like I say, it's not like a regular distribution. So it's not like you're going to now run a Docker, um, a Docker uh, load and run and um, run Volfi, just like on your computer now, download it and run. You will need to build a container image for that a container image that uses the Volfi packages. And so it composes a Volfi uh, distribution, a Volfi image, Volfi-based image. So that's why I need to talk about the tools that build it. So we're going to talk about Melange and APQ today primarily, because um, there is no other way to know Volfi without knowing the tools that build it and how you can um, also create your own container images based on Volfi. You're going to need APQ for that and maybe Melange too. So um, Melange is a declarative APK builder tool. You also have a YML file that you define your package, how it's going to be built. There's a lot of metadata there, and there's uh, a pipeline that you're going to execute to create your package. Um, so Melange is also part of the toolkit behind Volfi and ChainGuard images. Build pipelines are defined in YML files, as I mentioned, and it builds for uh, multiple architectures by default. So it uses QMU, 
and it can be used for lots of different architectures and you can use Docker on your machine to run the Melange image and then you have a platform agnostic builder using Docker and the APQ, actually the Melange image, there's a typo here. Um, so we're going to see a demo today and I hope it works then uh, about building a small package with Melange. APQ. So APQ is a declarative OCI image builder tool based on APK. So it builds uh, container images, open container initiative is uh, what OCI is for. And it builds, it builds these images um, based on a YML file. The builds are fully reproducible. And that's the important bit about using APK for that. And another really important thing is that it automatically generates SBOMs, software build materials for every image that is built. It automatically generates that for you. And you can also sign uh, your builds with SIGStore. And it also allows you to, uh, you can also create these images using the APQ Docker image. So you don't need to install other stuff on your machine for doing that. So it's worth uh, mentioning that these tools, they were created thinking of automation always first. Like you have to test it locally. Of course, you have to uh, run first locally to see how the build goes. And once you get it um, done and ready and, and working, then you can automate these maybe with GitHub actions or other ways of automating the builds uh, for your images. That's how we do, that's how we build chain guard images. And last but not least, chain guard images. So these three elements combined. So we have, uh, we use Melange to build the APKs that go into Vofi. Then we use APQO to create a container image using, the, using these uh, APKs. So then we have a uh, container image that is totally based on the Vofi packages. So it's a Vofi based image. And distroless, if you want it to be distroless, then you have less, um, less software on it, less packages. If you want it to be, uh, to have a shell or have other stuff, you can add it if you want, then it's theoretically, it's not distroless anymore, but then you can, uh, use it for development maybe, and then change it later when you don't need it anymore to have all these, uh, extra packages. So chain guard images, uh, are curated OCI images built with a point melange and most of them are based on Vofi, but some of them are still migrating from Alpine because Vofi is a very, very new um, distro. So we are still build, building the packages, the dependencies and all stuff that is needed to build more packages. So for instance, I wasn't able to build PHP a few weeks ago, and now we have libxml2 already. Uh, one of my colleagues built that package and now I can build PHP. So this is how we are uh, evolving it. And you can have a look at all the packages that are already available for Vofi in the Vofi OS GitHub repository. So ShinGuard images are nightly built and they are built for several platforms. The goal is to have zero CVEs and most of the time we uh, achieve the goal sometimes one shows up, but then as we have nightly builds, uh, usually this go away very quickly. We have, we apply the patches and then they go, uh, the updates, the updates come in really quickly and they have very high quality S bombs, S bombs because we are, uh, so one of the reasons to build Vofi was to be able to do that, to provide high quality S bombs. So as we, are taking care since of, of the beginning, like building the packages, then we can assure the, the origins of the software that's being included in the images. 
and it's all, they are also signed with Sig Store. So you, if you want to have a look at all the available images or, that are already available, you can check the GitHub organization chain guard dash images. Then you find there all the images that are already available, but we uh, probably will have more. We are still developing them. So here's that image again. So now that you heard about the, the, the tools and everything, um, then I can explain it better. So at the end of the day, what we want, we want safe, more secure container images that have um, less vulnerabilities, less CVEs. They are, we also want them to be uh, preferably smaller, but that's not always the case. But if they can be smaller, then it's good with a smaller um, surface of attack, right? So for building the images, we have APQO. Then APQO allows us to have reproducible builds and we have, uh, uh, it uh, facilitates automating building these images. And then uh, we have Melange because uh, distroless images, they don't, um, usually they don't have a package manager. They are very stripped to be only the essential. This will uh, also makes it more difficult for someone to tamper with the image and install stuff, extra stuff in there. So that's another, another reason why it's, it is that way. Um, so to include new, new software on a distroless image, then you're going to have to build an APK. In this case, if it's a distroless image that is Alpine or Wolfi based, then you need to build an APK. And then Melange allows you to build uh, APKs with the same characteristics as you have with APKO. They are uh, reproducible, they have a YML file, you can automate these builds and, and such. And then you have both Alpine based images and also Wolfie based images. Uh, both are possible. Uh, at the beginning, we were creating Alpine based images before we had Wolfie. And then we are slowly shifting to have our images all based on Wolfie as we build the dependencies that are needed for several like of these images. All right, so this was an overview of all the tools and Wolfie itself. And now I'm gonna talk a little bit about why distroless and why that is important. So the distroless philosophy it's uh, an idea of having an idea. It's not an idea. It started as an initiative um, from the founders of ChainGuard, some of the founders of ChainGuard. And then now um, it's more of a philosophy because it's not just uh, one, one set of images. Anyone can build a distress image. So they are basically minimalist container images on, with only what's necessary, like what's absolutely necessary to build or to execute your application. So if you think about popular base images, um, they are full of software that only makes sense on bare metal. So for instance, you have Ubuntu based images. They are really, usually they are very big. Uh, and so, so many others, like the, the PHP official images that I have been using, they were so big, um, and I only realized that after I started studying these topics and what is a distress image. So you actually you don't need a package manager, package manager or interactive shell. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you don't need on production container images. You only need to run or you want to need to build, so you don't need all that extra stuff. And you also don't need to make it easier for people to add more stuff to that image. Uh, you, uh, you have to make it harder. So the thing about having less dependencies is that you have a way smaller attack surface. So that means less CVEs. 
and it's not just in theory like you have we have several um graphics like this showing the differences between our images and that were built with these tools and the official images like nginx um and this one uh that dan lawrence shared on twitter recently and i stole for these slides so this is um a view of dependencies so you can see the number of dependencies in standard images and in chain guard images so it's a huge difference and of course that will um, make a difference also when you you are thinking of cves so all of these dependencies some of course we have cves so the the more you can um short like make it uh, less you know less dependencies means less cvs that is for sure um and this is a custom image so that was with chain guard image and you could think well those are like the official images from chain guard if i'm going to build my own custom image maybe i'm not going to get such a good result but that's not true because i built my own image and I got, I was really surprised with the results. So this is one example. I had this um, GitHub action running with a older PHP image and it was a huge difference. So I built a distroless PHP image. This one in this case is not Wolfie. The one I built for Miniclee was Alpine based, but it was already such a good result, such a great difference. So this is only one example of what you get if you decide to create your own custom image, or if you also, uh, if there is one chain guard image that you can use uh, as a base, then it will also, you will also benefit from this, this huge difference in CVEs and um, attack surface. Okay. So starting to get in the good part. So I'm going to show now. I'm going to talk about how to compose a distroless image. Um, I decided to use the word composing here because it's um, ideally you. A series of packages to build your image. Uh, I created these flowcharts kind of to uh, explain a bit how the process it is like um, to create an image and also migrating. Uh, though there is no like uh, one right or one short answer for like migration straightforward every case will be a different case it really depends on uh, what kind of dependencies you have and where they come from so even between like stacks it will vary if your dependencies are system dependencies or if they are user land dependencies like in php we have composer or npm so uh, uh, all these factors will uh, influence how you're going to build your image. But like in general terms, you're going to start, you're going to create your apqo.yml file. The first thing you're going to need is to identify all system dependencies that you're going to need to run whatever you're going to run in this image. So um, you will need to also locate the APK sources for that. If you're going to build using uh, Volfi, then you're going to have a look at the repo and then going to see which packages are there available. And maybe you um, you have all your packages are already available there. So then you can build your image. Or maybe you're going to build an Alpine image. And then in this case, you're going to look at the Alpine packages repository. They have a um, a website, a page where you can search for the packages there. 
and find um, the repository where the package is. This is important to build your apkill.yml file. We're going to need the source, the, re the repo, and the names of the packages. Once you uh, kind of identify, you have at least a good idea of all the dependencies and where you can find them. Uh, and this is something that you might need to do uh, on trial and error. Hang on a moment. Um, then the next step is the question, um, need to download third-party software. And what I mean with that, I mean um, software that is user-land, like dependencies that are user-land dependencies, such as composer dependencies on PHP land, NPM dependencies, things that the user installs, anything that is not available as an AP key, basically, actually, let me rephrase that. Anything that is not already available as an AP key, then you're going to need to um, create a package with Melange. If you want to really have the final result to be a distroless image with that software in it, then you have to package it. So you're going to have to create a Melange package, and then you're going to go to the next one. I forgot one arrow there. Um, and then you will go to set up image sources and dependencies. If you don't need to install additional software in it, then you can go straight to that uh, step that is set up image sources and dependencies. And there is a content section on the on the YML where you can where you will set up these sources and package names. Then you set up your entry point like you usually do with a Docker file. Then you you also have a, a, a entry point set setting there on the YML node. Um, and then you're going to run apkill build to build your image. If the build works, then you made it. Um, you just need to test it, of course. But uh, yeah, you're going to load it with Docker and test your image to see if it works. But if the build fails, and then it's probably dependencies. So this is something that you need to do a few times, um, especially if you're coming from Debian-based images. That was my case. So the dependency names were different. Some things were covered already by the PHP package, different than the Debian version. So there were a few different names also. I had to figure out those, and I had to run quite a few times. But then I figured the dependencies right, and I was able to build my PHP image that way. Um, if you are coming from a Debian-based Docker file, this is not the case for everyone. But in my case, I found it easier to migrate my Docker file, my Debian-based Docker file, to Alpine first, because I needed to uh, get more familiar with AP keys and how they work, how AP key works, and the package names as well, different. Um, then I, it was easier to go for the APQ uh, file to have the dependencies right. OK, so yes, the next, um, <clears throat> next slide is an example of a YML file, apqo.yml file. And this is how kind of it looks. It's just one, but it was a lot of text, so I broke it into columns. So you have the contents nodes where you have the repositories, and the repositories are where the packages can be found. In this case, the example is for building a PHP image based on Alpine. So it's using the Alpine repositories, main and community. So then I install it. Alpine base layout, PHP 8.1, PHP 8.1 common. These are my dependencies. And then I have set an entry point to run the PHP executable, which is PHP 8.1 in Alpine. Um, and then I set a path environment variable. And I set up a group, uh, groups and users, one group and one user uh, non-root 
to run as a non-root user to execute the scripts. So in some cases, you might, if you're gonna be, use uh, your image as a base image, and you want to um, be able to create users and do other things in a Docker file, because it's also fine if you create a base image with most of your stuff, um, one AP, a distroless image, and then you create a Docker file to base from that. But in this case, you need all the software to be already in the distroless image. You can still create users uh, and do other things though. So should be fine. Um, okay, so once you have your apqo.yml file set, then you can run this command is uh, using Docker to run the, the apqo builds commands. In this case, uh, we have a distroless apqo image, so you can uh, use that to build your apqo images. Uh, kind of inception thing. So you give it an, a name and a tag, and then you give it an, a file name. So this is gonna build your image and put it on a tar file. Then you can load the star file with Docker using Docker load. And then you can finally run your image to test it and see if it works at all. Mm, yeah, so this is basically how you build a distroless image. Apico file and then building the running the commands. Uh, but when you use QSOM Melange packages, then you will have here on the packages and on the repositories, you have special uh, uh, special string to let APQ know that um, you have a local package that is in a source folder that you're going to specify. And then you can also install packages from your local folder. All right. so. I have here some slides based on the migration case study that I did with the PHP image. Uh, and I'm gonna show them briefly and then we go to the demo. So the GitHub action uh, was running with an image based on PHP 7.4 actually. I updated the app later on uh, it was even bigger than the PHP 8.1 image that I showed before a comparison. And uh, so what I did, as I mentioned, first I collected the dependencies. And then I looked at the Alpine repository for those dependencies. And I found some were with different names, but I ended up finding all of them. Then uh, I changed that on my GitHub action. And then you can see the, the pink box is actually my, uh, my GitHub action. So the image that I built was mini Cli PHP 8.1, and that is a single layer image. So it goes very fast. Um, and then this uh, red box here is um, Docker, not Docker, but the engine pulling the composer image, like copying the composer executable to my image, but that pulls a series of other layers from other images. So when you combine uh, a distroless and some other image, you end up having, of course, a bigger image but that's uh, still better than using only a huge images for all your composition. But ideally, if you can package everything and put it on a distroless, everything already there, it's better. And this was the before after that I already showed, but this, uh, actually this one, is with the PHP 7.4 image as before. So this was even bigger than the other one. So these are some links to learn more. I'm gonna show them again. 
But now I'm going to share my terminal and let's hope everything works. <laughs> Let me organize things here. And you just find it here. Okay, share my screen. Okay. Okay, okay. So what I have here is a repository I set up for the demo for today. And So I created a, I have a little demo app, Hello Mini Clip, which uses a small command line framework for PHP. It's just like a single file and a composer.json and one index, like index file, a script file. Um, and then I have here two different melange files one is for building php because this is something that we are still working on so the php package is not yet available at the Vofi os repository we are working on that so i have the package built locally here and i'm going to show you how this looks like the melange.yml for that so this uh the php package is here so this is what comes when you build a, a package with Melange. So you're going to have the AP key one or more, depending on what you build and how you build, because you can also create sub packages. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I did this. And then you have the AP key index. So the AP key index is required to get your packages installed by APK, you need an index. And this is also automatically generated by Melange. So I'm going to show you um, the Melange file. Let me see if you can visualize this here. So this is where it starts. So you have the name, you have the version of the package. The epoch is uh, something used to change the priority of packages. If you want to build, uh, there's something to do with the version numbers to give a package with a lower version, some uh, higher priority when, uh, down, when installing. And that's all I know about it. Um, and then the description, the target architecture, that you want to build for, you can build for others. And at the moment, like when you are starting to build, you can. That's why I set up to, to that architecture. And then you have copyright, some metadata that is required. And then you have the important stuff coming here. The environment will define how your build environment will look like. So these are all the dependencies you're going to need to build your package. And the sources are here. So this is a um, Wolfie package. So I'm going to be using dependencies from the Wolfie repositories. Um, and they also, we set up, uh, the key ring for, for the packages. And then we have the packages here. So these are all available already at the Volfi OS repository. So you can, if you, if your dependencies are like something like this, you can already build, uh, your package. So I needed these for building PHP and now these are already available. So the pipeline will fetch. Use, so what is this? So the pipeline is all this, okay? So this is what's going to run 
and this is the main pipeline to build your package. And what it the uses does actually, <coughs> the uses here uh, is to use a kind of a built-in pipeline. Is another pipeline that is um, built-in, kind of a module. So the fetch pipeline is used to, as you can imagine, fetch packages, download packages, and it already implements um, hash checking for security. Uh, so you can specify your SHA here, and then you're gonna, it will only download if it matches, basically. Otherwise you get an error. So these so the sub pipelines or like the built-in pipelines, they are in the repo, in the Melange repository, you can find them. There is a directory there with the pipelines that are built-in. Um, can we already build around custom pipelines? Not yet, but it's in the roadmap. So I also don't know dates, but it's something that came to attention already to the team and they they probably are gonna implement it, but might take a while. Um, so we have also others. These are all built-in pipelines also to facilitate, can be reused. So the make, make, install, these are all, all available. And what I do here is I fetch the PHP package uh, and then I will run the configure commands and it's, Fairly simple right now because I'm still really testing all this stuff. Probably should have more options. Um, and then make make install like the basic stuff to install to build a package, right? Uh, it's been a while since I did this. I'm still to trying to relearn everything. Uh, and then you have the sub packages. So this is really interesting. I think it's really clever. So what happens is when you build a package from source, there's a bunch of uh, files there that you may not need for most things, but in some cases you are may need them, like uh, some development headers and um, specific libraries that can come or like other executables, additional executables, a debugger, like in PHP, uh, when you compile it from source, then you get the PHP CLI that is just the PHP executable. Then you also get PHP CGI and then PHP DBG, which is the, which is the debugger. And all of these have like um, 30 meg megabytes without the before stripping the headers, the, the, the stuff that you can remove. Um, so you can just like put them in a separate package, right? Because you don't need to have all of them bloating your package, your main package that you want to use the run for a runtime. So then you can do this. Right now I'm splitting the dev uh, headers. There's already a pipeline for that. And I am removing, like moving, not removing, but moving the CGI, PHP CGI, and I am also moving the DBG. So you will have these as separate packages. When you build Melange, it's gonna create a sub package along with the main package. I'm gonna show you in a moment how the output is. Yes, I can show right now, actually. So you can, if you look at here, you then I actually, I showed before, right? So you have the PHP 8.1 APK, that's the main package. Um, and if I do like this to show sizes better, okay. So then you have the main package uh, and then the CGI in the DBG and the dev, you know, so each one, you know, occupies little space, but you can still remove them if you're not going to use them. So yes, and you can do this with a lot of other stuff there. I'm still uh, looking what I can strip. If I can remove more, then I will. <laughs> okay, so this is PHP and it's already compiled. Uh, the APK is already built because it 
um, takes a little bit of time to build, so I built it beforehand. But then we also have the application melange. So the melange app, YML, has a melange definition to build a PHP package, right? So here, uh, similar, but that's uh, simpler, but yeah. I give it a name, then a version, description, and here I want to build only for exit. Uh, oh, I thought I was editing. <laughs> yes, I'm going to just change these. Actually, I, you can uh, overwrite these at um, runtime, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm not going to change, but you can use uh, also all here in target act architecture so it's going to try to build for all architectures that are registered with QMU uh, on your system so you might fall in some errors if you don't have the dependencies built for those platforms as well so yeah that's why you it's better to start only with x like not just x4 um, it depends x86. It depends on your architecture, of course. Where on a Mac, it's going to be different. But then, yeah, you can start with using your own <clears throat> architecture from the host to try to build, and then you um, improve that uh, open for other architectures later. Um, and then I have dependencies here. So this is. Maybe that, that I didn't add dependencies on the PHP package yet, but these are runtime dependencies. So they are not going to be pulled for the build, but actually they are going to be pulled because I'm adding them here. But uh, oh, actually this one is, yeah, this one is outdated. Now I see that it's, um, it's pulling from Alpine. So we need to change these for Volfi. So, and this is the pipeline, just to, to give you an idea. It's a different, uh, it's a bit different from the PHP pipeline build. Of course, that one was more uh, about, it was compiling a actually huge software, piece of software. And this is just like uh, installing Composer. And uh, because also, yeah, I see that it's not going to work with Wolfie now, if I'm changing this, if I'm, putting the both the repos here because we don't have yet all the dependencies there on the repositories. So I'm going to have to build Composer first, uh, creating a melange for that. And then I have the Composer package and then I can build this. So you see, it's uh, it can be a little bit tricky to create your own custom images the way you want, uh, but it's so worth it. Uh, I really mean it, <laughs> uh, because the results I got with my own PHP images that I built, and those are still Alpine-based. So that's why I'm working now to get the PHP packages built, so I can actually migrate everything to use Wolfie. OK, so this part of the final part of running uh, the Melange built, I'm going to be missing this time, but I can show you how to, I can show the actual, the build of PHP, but that's going to take a little bit. And then I can talk about something else to do meanwhile. So PHP is right here. There is uh, lots of tests going on right now. The launch builds. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not following the chat because I got distracted. So, okay, I have here this, what I'm going to build is Melange, Melange PHP. No, oh, Melange Volfi. So this is how a melange build looks <clears throat> looks like. I'm building for x86. 
66, 64. Um, so you can see here it's downloading the dependencies for the, the built uh, environment. And soon it's going to start running the pipeline. So that's going to take a while compiling, compiling PHP. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to show the uh, apqo.yml file that uses local, locally built packages. Okay, I'm going to split my screen here. And still downloading. Um, let me see. I think it's APQ release. Okay, so I think I moved some by mistake um, while I was creating my demo. Let me see. Global feed demo. one yes all right so this this one is the the apq yml file using locally built packages just so you can see how it looks like so you use the at local um identifier and where the packages are. So if you are building with Docker, usually this is going to be this location um, because the the APQO Docker image has a uh, entry point set to slash work inside the container. <clears throat> and then the K-ring stuff and the packages. So when you have a locally, uh, locally built package, then you are gonna use also the identifier here <clears throat> to use that kind of a local repository. That's what it is. Um, yes, and then you can just set your entry points commands to run your application, and then voila, you have your distroless image that is a um, final user, let's say, image, and it's still it's distroless. So this is going to take a little while. So what I'm going to do now, looking at the time, I'm going to go back to the slides. And I already saw you, showed you the output from this command. So this build is going to generate the same. It's just going to re rewrite those packages that are on the packages folder that I showed you before. Let me go to the slides now. Oh no. Actually, yes. Okay. It works too. Okay, it's still building there. Um oh yeah, it's it's in the beginning. Okay, let me skip this the ends and i'm going to show you the resources page and i'll be too much uh, and then we're going to open for questions we have to some time for questions so this is the link these are the actually the links are clickable but you're going to have access to the slides so i'm going to share uh, and make sure the chain guard account retweets it on Twitter so that you can uh, get these slides and get these links. There are some also, I have some links here also to show. Um, yes, so Wolfy Docs, it should be showing there for, for you. And also check the Melange Docs. But then you can just go to Chain Guard Academy, actually, and then you find everything there on the open source menu. Gonna find 
Melange, APQ, and Vofi. So the docs, tutorials, we are still building those up. So it's going to take a while to have more tutorials and more really guided uh, content, but we are building that so soon. Okay, so I'm going to open the Q&A. Oh, I see the Q&A now. <laughs> okay. Uh, this first question that shows up here for me, I use Fedora Core OS. Is that a description of the differences? Well, um, a description, I would say that uh, I never use it that uh, as a base image for, for my images, to be honest. So I don't know much so to say the difference specifically. But in general, Vofi is a very tiny layer uh, where you're going to add only what you want. So it has only what's strictly necessary to... Um, to be able to run the, the, the system, you know? So it's probably lots of, there's probably a lot of differences because you cannot use it in other situations other than using for containers. So it's very stripped. I guess that's uh, the difference for, for all the other distros. Uh, so the next question, what is the recommended approach? Oh, no, I clicked another one, sorry. Uh, are you reliant on another distro for CVF fixes for Vofi packages? What if that distro decides not to fix something promptly? Uh, actually, we have a patch system. We have, we use the packages um, from source. So we apply the patches as well. The Melange YML specification has, um, has a space, let's say, has a... Uh, a way where you can there's a way you can define the patches and they can you can add the patches to a folder if i not uh, if my memory doesn't fail me um and then the patches are applied to to the builds so as far as i know that's how the the patch works patching works for Vofi. we don't depend on um other distros some things we cannot fix ourselves, but then it's uh, another story. So, yeah. Um, what is the recommended approach when you want to use make during building a Go image? Um, well, that is, um, I won't have an answer for that because I'm not familiar with building Go images and Go applications in general. But in general, generally speaking, um, you uh, the, the workflow doesn't change much. So if you need to add, to add stuff to the image that is not already prepackaged as an APK, you probably going to have to package, create an APK with Melange so that you can uh, install it on your image. Um, if you still want a better question, a better answer, of course, you probably want, uh, then please um, reach out because uh, we have people who have a question, uh, who can answer your question uh, better than I can this specific question. Um, okay. What are those RSA keys for? So I see this one. So these keys are used to sign the AP keys. Uh, and although it's not required, some uh, systems will not allow you to install an AP key that is not signed. So that's why you have the, the keys. And APQ will require you to, to have APKs that are signed. That's why we use the keys for, for signing the APKs that we build with Melange. Um, okay. So I'm going to see if there's, uh, there's quite a lot of questions to you, and we are uh, quickly reaching the ends 
of this session. So what I'm going to do is we're going to, our team is going to collect the questions so we can answer them uh, via Twitter or we can put together a little doc or maybe even add these questions to the FAQ. So these questions are all important. Thank you for asking all those questions. And we're going to get the, your answers and we're going to share them on Twitter as soon as we can. All right. So, um, yeah, we, we've been through questions already. Thank you so much. Um, there's so much to cover, so much to write about. There's a lot of documentation that I have to write still. So please uh, keep up with us uh, and you can follow us on Twitter. There is also our GitHub. You can follow the projects there. And if you have questions as I mentioned, reach out, please. Uh, it's very helpful for us to also to improve the documentation. And now I should um, okay. yeah, I should end the session. Thank you all for joining. I don't want to take more of your time. Uh, and thank you all for all this, uh, the questions also. That is very helpful. And yes, I hope to see you again. Maybe we have another session another day. Let's see how it goes. Yes, thank you so much. And see you around.